Uh, Nick, uh, you're an Australian citizen, I but am. you're a Brit as well. I am. Tell me about your take I, of I, what happened there. Yeah. Uh, and, and why won't Labor actually <laughs> concede that it didn't win the arguments and the majority is not wrong? I think Brexit is only part of the story here, right? I think what yeah. Brexit and the fact that Labor had a, a uh, really quite extreme and, and, and frightening leader uh, just made a, accelerated a process that's been going on really since Margaret Thatcher, uh, and that is, you know, uh, the middle class, the working class in the Midlands, the North, coming over to the Conservatives, moving away from Labor, as Labor has become more progressive. And um, the pitch is very plain on the map. You know, you've got, apart from London and Manchester, a few other little tiny dots of red. Each one of those, if you go and look at it, is a university town. So that's telling you what's happening. You, yeah. you, they're capturing those, those elite. 56% uh, of Labor voters had either a degree or a pro or professional qualification. Yeah, Antoinette, tell me about uh, the left and losing elections. Every time the left loses an election, it seems to be the golden rule that they cry they were robbed. The voters got it wrong. The media was against them. There's always some excuse. Why can't they accept the result and learn some lessons from it? Because the voters get it right. Well, I think whoever loses, they always seem to blame. Oh, well, you know, the polls weren't right, or Twitter wasn't right, or, Name you know, the example. media... Name me an example where a Conservative government or right of centre government has lost an election and blamed all these other factors? Well, there'll be, there'll be instances in the past where the ABC has been blamed for being too harsh on a coalition government. But, but I irrespective of what you mentioned earlier um, in your little editorial, what we're seeing in the United States, in Australia and in the UK is that the media and even pollsters, and certainly Twitter, is out of touch with whether, whether you want to call them the quiet Australians or the middle, Brit the middle Brits. Um, and that is showing in results. People are surprised. I yeah. mean, uh, we were, were surprised in Australia. The UK expected this win, but they didn't expect it by a landslide. But to me, that speaks volume to just how concentrated our media is you know, in inner city elite circles and how they just don't have a finger on, on the pulse as to what other people are actually, you know, regular so Australians the are left actually media. thinking. The left media get it wrong all, all the media. time. I would no. say all media. I would say all media because well, well. even, even in the Australian election, people weren't... Everybody was quite surprised. No, they, the they were all surprised on Channel 10, but and they were all surprised at the ABC, but and they were all polls, surprised in the, the Fairfax polls, newspapers. They, but even the polls got it wrong. No, the, but but the polls in, in the had UK, it with 51-49. Yeah, and, and in the polls in Australia had it 51-49, but as all the left journos got it wrong, and uh, here at, uh, in, the, in the News Corp papers on this station, there were so many people who were saying the coalition could win. Some, like Rowan D Dean, said they were emphatically would win. But I mean, it looked so, like Scott Morrison himself looked surprised. In his, in his victory speech, he didn't look like he was certain he was going to win. Oh, well, there's so many. It's all written. It's all there in black and white. Uh, I, I wrote it. I said it on here. The coalition were always a good chance to win right up. So, you know, it's, it's staggering. I just want to explore this a, a little further, though, what happens when there is a result uh, with you, Gemma, because I cannot think of right of centre governments ever complaining, blaming everybody mm. else when they lose. They tend yeah, to say, we stuffed up, we got things wrong, yeah. and here's what we're going to learn. I mean, that's just a fundamentally flawed statement to make. I'm sorry. Did John Howard blame anyone? But did John Howard blame the media when he got booted out of office after being Australia's most successful Prime Minister in generations? No, he didn't. This is a factor of the left. Uh, we've, and we've got the... Uh, the, 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 the point of reference um, of so many election losses in the last couple of years, so we know what that, that they have form. It's, it's not something that Conservatives tend to do, and we've seen it in the States. Hillary Clinton is still banging around America, telling people <laughs> she should be in the White House. She says that, she can actually, defeat Donald Trump again. She, and, and what, what, what delusion is that? And, and more to the point, Chris, I had a conversation with someone on the weekend who said, oh, but Hillary won... The, the, the popular vote. And I turned to that person and said, if, if the roles had been reversed and Hillary Clinton was in the White House, how many of you would be saying, oh, but, you know, she shouldn't be there because Donald Trump won the popular vote? It, you wouldn't be saying it, A, because it's, it's a moot point, but second of all, because this is a, a hallmark of the regressive left. The, the same people who are out there protesting in the streets of London with the lunacy of not my Prime Minister. Newsflash here, he is your Prime Minister. It's called democracy. This is a generation, Chris, that have never lost anything. They've had participation medals since day dot. And the minute that a, a, a democratic vote doesn't go their way, it's all, you know, tear gas and, and flares at midnight. 
I, I don't understand. It's and 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 you know the one thing I can agree with Jim Chalmers on is that unless uh, the the left parties can find their way back to a sensible centre, as much as that's a cliche, it's the truth, and the polls are telling us it's the truth. Unless they can find themselves there, you know, Jeremy Corbyn has led British Labor into uh, into the, his own version of the uh, Israelites in the wilderness for 40 years. It'll be 40 years unless they get themselves together. Yeah, I mean, Jim Chalmers is absolutely right to say economic credibility 100%. is everything, but he's done nothing yeah. to deliver that. In fact, he's been part of the problem. And when are they going to actually make some changes? You mentioned well, the protests is, yeah. on the streets of London. Mm. Let's have a look at some of the carry here, carry on here from people that I would describe as democracy deniers. It is a pig, and I'm so ashamed that he's the Prime Minister of my country. It's disgusting, and I wish him the worst. I wish him a horrible death. I don't know if you're allowed to put that online, <laughs> but he's everything up for people my age, our future. I plan to work in the NHS, I plan to be a doctor, I plan to actually care about people, and he doesn't care. And to see working class people caring about Boris Johnson. They're shooting themselves in the face. It's disgusting. And yeah, I wish him the worst. Go yourself, Boris Johnson. Honestly, what a Honestly, it does your head in. Now, Tanvir, you are a doctor. What, what, what about well, someone who wants to be a medical doctor? Well, combination talking of about her... wishing someone a death. Well, the combination of her and what you were alluding to. So, great example of young, educated, probably quite wealthy. She sounded like a toff, let's be honest. And her contact mm -hmm. with the working class is probably pretty limited. That, uh, when we're talking about media bias, I think it's more a reflection of these, this big realignment. You have educated professionals living in the urban uh, cities that are more and more distant from where the pulse of certainly of politics, and, and the Liberal Party, our election in Morrison, there were many, many people in the regions and outer western suburbs who voted Liberal for the first time. And a similar thing happened here. But I think another thing, it wasn't just a repudiation of the Green Left, it was also partly a repudiation of a libertarian of right, to some extent. Because the tax, he wasn't mm. voting for uh, low taxes, mm. he was pushing higher minimum wage. The NHS is kind of a religion in Britain, and quite a few commentators said yeah. that. So it's not, you know, you had to stick to that higher spending infrastructure. Suddenly the, the centre of gravity for Tories will also shift. It'll be less toffee, they'll be working class, of they'll be boiler it has makers. To be, yeah. And I think um, there's a massive realignment here. And you do wonder when, uh, I mean, certainly the left, and arguably moderates in the right too, who still don't necessarily see these sort of huge shifts. Uh, and Brexit encapsulates a lot more than just in English leaving the EU. It's a set of values. It's an idea of what community is, what we mean by belonging it's against mass immigration, globalisation. Sovereignty. Oh, it's all these... partially it's... also a bit of xenophobia and anti-immigration. Oh, That's also... Oh, no, no, come don't on. Give it come on. That's what they like. They wonder no. why they get it wrong. How, is, how, is oh, that, how can you say that people who want to control their own country exercise their own sovereignty and self-determination of being there xenophobic? There may be a small element. I think there is an element but of that. But at a bigger weird. level. But that's why well, the left loses. Well, because they keep a, calling it Let's racist. have an example. Let's right? have an example. No, I'm saying there where, may be strains of that, in, but the vast majority... It's where, more about we want control of the border. Where's the evidence of strains of xenophobia? Well, I don't know, but I'm saying th there may well, be a tiny proportion of that. You know, this, but, this is a very interesting... Coming off the back of your... Hang on a second. Uh, Nick, Nick Cater's on this. Coming off the back of that clip, that young lady, there's a very interesting thing happening in age here. So it turns out that 57 or... Six, if you 62% of under-24 voters voted either Labor or the Green, and only 18% of them voted Conservative. If you go to the over 65, it's exactly the reverse. And this is, this is a radical change in politics there, as we're seeing here. And I think what you've got very much is this real generational battle There's, a, there's a big generational and, element and to I this. I just don't know how that resolves itself. Uh, Gemma, you were going to say? I was just going to comment about the, the, the view about the Brexit situation. and. <laughs> the only economy or the main economy to benefit from the EU's policies of recent years is the German economy and if you're living in Britain and having your economic future determined by Brussels and being told what you can and can't do in, by, by parliamentarians in Brussels who uh, no longer just a trading block are now talking about things like we'll have an EU army and we'll have an EU flag and all that sort of stuff and I want to draw a parallel to what's happening in Italy which is of course a country I know quite well. Uh, give you a recent example Chris, you've got dairy farmers in the south of Italy pouring milk down the sink because it costs them uh, to, it costs them more to produce the milk than they can get at market because of the impact of the EU's policies in that particular sector. So don't 
tell me that it's xenophobia when you're a farmer in a European country who can't make a living because of economic policy dictated by a foreign country. That's not xenophobia. That is like, I just want to be able to sell my product at market. Imagine if it was Australia being told by another, Asia, like an, an, uh, 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 another country in the Asia-Pacific region, Australia, this is what you will charge for your product. Australia, yeah, this is nuts. what Australian it's, it's, farmers it's, it's, will it's, do. It just wouldn't fly. No, it just the, wouldn't sovereign, fly. the sovereignty the issue is supreme people. here. And sovereignty, is the, and sovereignty as a concept, uh, as a fundamental uh, belief system, the nation state is at the core of what's happened in the US, Australia and, and, and the UK. Speaking, uh, I showed you earlier what uh, Boris Johnson said uh, in his uh, post-election speech where he was trying to embrace those people who had voted uh, Tory for the first time. That's uh, very much a, a message of inclusion. Uh, it's the way democracy, democracy should operate, of course, because he will be Prime Minister for everybody, whether they voted for him or not. But these protesters on the streets of London had entirely the opposite message. Look, I, 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 they're, they're exercising their democratic right. I mean, I think it's a bit silly because he is their prime minister. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with them, you know, spending an hour doing, you know, shouting, he's not my prime minister. It's not going to change anything. But if we're talking about democracy, it's their democratic right to protest. Of course it's their democratic I mean, right to do it. Denial, well, I guess, it's, it's, I guess it's it's it looks so ridiculous because it shows the kind of denial that is rampant exactly. in the left. Because whenever something like this, you'll get something like that. It says, I'm, I'm still morally right. And the reason they keep failing is because they, they won't accept that the arguments are wrong. It's, what usually happens after this is the yeah. arguments were right, but the media corrupted it, or we didn't sell it properly, or the leader wasn't right. What's going wrong is they never accept that their arguments are fundamentally wrong in the realignment that is going across, right across Western society. And and Repeatedly calling yeah. them racist, gender, you know, sexist, yeah, and I think et that's interesting. It's not going to work. It's interesting because I think it's mirrored um, in Australia as well. In the last election, for example, you know, I grew up, my parents are refugees. I grew up in Western Sydney in a Labor stronghold. Uh, over the past decade or so, I've seen a lot of family become conservative voters. And I think for a long time, Labor took for granted that that was their base. But their base shifted and their ideals shifted. Absolutely. But the, but the, but the, well, the, I don't think their the base policy... shifted, the Labour shifted. That's the trouble. Oh, well, Labour has moved away from the mainstream. Potentially a combination of the two and I think they got complacent because all of a sudden everybody around me had changed their politics and changed who they supported. But it did, didn't... Did they be... Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. To... No, no, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just curious. No, because did they, did they become complacent or was it that Labour shifted to, you know, to, too far to the Green left? Is that part of the equation as well? Because you're dead right. I mean, after the after the last election, we saw exactly what Tanvir was just alluding to. We mm. didn't have uh, a Bill Shorten or a Labor Party that said, we got it wrong. Uh, the Australian electorate did not come on board with what we were selling. It was like, oh, you know, our policies were just too smart. You guys were just too dumb. Yep. It's too complicated Same for thing. you guys. Same thing Everyone happening in Britain now. Well, I think, so, I think so, perhaps yeah. traditional voting patterns changed in that Labor perhaps appealed to the working class. And I'm not suggesting, and many of my family members are still working class. So I think what's changing is we're seeing voting, voters not necessarily sticking to what was stereotypically ex expected of them. But Antoinette, You're in ethnic speaking. groups, what's happened is socio-culturally, Labor, the Labor Party shifted very much to the left. And, and, and that turned off a lot of ethnic groups who are, tend to be mm. much more conservative, more conservative. Yeah, much more religiously yes. and culturally conservative. This and that's, is, um, where the, that's where the coalition and the Liberal the, government had the, their appeal. There's been no change in how Australian elections are won. They're always won in the mainstream and therefore in suburban and regional Australia. You, it's always where the swinging seats are. It's always where the great mainstream values are. What has shifted in Australia over the past uh, couple of decades uh, since Bob Hawke uh, and Paul Keating is Labor has shifted to the left away from that cohort. Yeah. And that, that, that's, that's the only reason Scott Morrison was able to get re-elected after such a tumultuous mm -hmm. period of, of li liberal instability. Well, with, with migrant communities, it's, and you can't generalise, of course, but if you take, say, the Chinese community, uh, they are very socially conservative, right? And, and, and they really, I mean, a lot of the Chinese... Uh, voters uh, I've spoken to really were irritated by things like same-sex marriage and other things that have been happening. Same as, so, Middle, East, same as Middle Eastern communities. Yeah, so, so in that sense, when Labor goes really progressive on those social mm. uh, issues, that's when it gets into real trouble, I think. But in the end, I think you know, many migrants 
end up recognising that small business is what they're involved in yes. and, and, the, and the Liberal Party is more their cup of tea. Sure. And and I might add, at the same time, what we've seen with, uh, with media outlets, many have closed or have you know, almost no presence in regional areas. They don't have Western S Sydney bureaus. They don't have any journos that hail from those areas. So they've really, they're really out of... More and more centralised. They're yeah. really centralised. They're not even mm -hmm. getting away from their desks, let alone, to, let yeah. alone speaking yeah. to these communities. Yeah. All that completely out of touch, other than the ABC, which is mandated to well, be in certain quite, regional quite territory. the opposite, I would say. The, the ABC are the worst offenders. They have, uh, but they, they've got regional of, offices, yeah, at but, least. But they, don't, they, they only serve their regional communities. Every, most of their product comes out of South Bank and Ultimo, yes. and that's produced mm -hmm. by people living in the inner city, uh, green left uh, uh, centres of Melbourne and Sydney, completely out of touch with the regionals. They sneer at regional values and regional Australia. Well, and and sense, that's why they get every, them, the I elections wrong. I just think they're out of touch. They act, you know, I, I don't think they sneer. I, I, I have worked at the ABC and this is part of the work so I do with I. media... I know how they're out of touch. Um, and, I, and this is part of the work I do with Media Diversity Australia, trying to get more diverse journos in. When you have we'll more talk diverse... talk about that after the break.